Hi, Jill here from Legato Jill. In this video, I'll be showing you how I made this cake using Katie's Sue Design Mold. Very easy, so much fun to do. I'm gonna start doing the pumpkin using some fondant, colored orange, like for the pumpkin. I'm gonna be putting in some Tylos or CMC powder, whichever you prefer. As you can see, I'm a bit generous in my Tylos. You'll see why. I like the fondant to react right away. I don't want it to be too soft, too stretchy. I want it to kind of snap on me. So I'm mixing it very well, so that way I'm sure that I don't have a soft part and a hard part in my lump of fondant. See, when I separate it, it snaps, it doesn't stretch. Okay, so to start, I'm gonna take a little piece of fondant, push it into the cavity, making sure that I push it in into the loose thing. I'm gonna be putting some scorch stars over it and using my plexiglass I squash it in to make sure it imprints properly and then from this with the side of that plexiglass I'm going to be shaving that way the excess of fondant that I have my mold I can't use a knife for that because I would risk to cut my mold I don't want that and look how easy it is to just remove it and sever it now since I'm going to be doing a bunch of pumpkin I want to change a bit the shape of them so that they're not all the same regular so playing with them I do change the plate so let's do it one more time fill the cavity shave the excess and that's it now that my all my half are done I'm gonna glue them together I'm gonna find each one to match with the other and I'm gonna be gluing them the fun part is that the seam will become part of like the line in the pumpkin with my dressing tool I could just go and shape it and give it a line and it will become invisible so using a bit of a edible glue I'm gonna take a bit and brush it all over I'm making sure that I'm brushing it good because I want my edible glue to dilute the sugar I don't want it to just be there I want it to be right away to react and glue together there we are see that's just as easy to do let's do another one so taking two half making sure that they kind of match together using a bit of edible glue and aligning them and from that, I'm going to leave them to dry. So let's go and do all of them. Okay, now I'm going to be doing the moon. So I'm going to be rolling a thick piece of gum paste. Not a thin piece, but a thick piece because I want it to really be resistant. I don't want it to break too easily. And I'm using gum paste because it's, it really hardens better than fondant. It doesn't stay flexible. Fondant will maybe bit too flexible for that. Using a cardboard as a template, I'm going to be cutting a circle. Using a paring knife. Very easy to do. I love those paring knife. They're just perfect for that. Removing the excess and I'm going to be softening the edge just to make sure it's all clean, all perfect, that when I put it on it's a beautiful piece. I will be also cutting a little part of it to make it flat at the bottom now I'm gonna be putting the silhouette of Snoopy on it so for that I'm gonna be rolling a thin thin piece of gum paste I don't want to use fondant because fondant might just be too elastic in and deform gum paste is more resistant for that I printed myself the silhouette the shape I wanted the size I wanted and I'm gonna be putting it upside down face down on my gum paste using a scalpel I'm going to be cutting around why am I putting it upside down because right now as you could see my finger are holding my silhouette my template on the gum paste so I'm putting a bit of pressure which is going to make some indentation inside you so having it upside down the face down will always be perfect And the scalpel is just perfect for those things because it's a very pointy so it follows very easily 
just be very careful using the scalpel though. So see, there's a piece. I'm just going to clean it up, make sure that there's no little filament left from the cutting it. Okay, so using, now I'm going to put my moon. As you can see, the bottom part is cut off. Yes, it's going to be like the moon's coming out of the cake in some sort of black shadow. A bit of edible glue on the silhouette. Once again, with edible glue, I brushed it. Not too much, but I make sure that it kind of dilute, dilute the sugar. So it just goes in. And then I'm gonna take it and flip it around and put it on my piece of gum paste. Uh, now I have to be careful because I don't want it, since I'm touching the glue, I don't want to touch the white part of the moon, not to dirty it. And there we are. Okay, now the next part on the moon will be to put some skewers in the back to hold, make it hold on the cake. So I'm going to be using those bamboo skewer. I'm going to pre-cut the length that I need. And using a small piece of gum paste, I'm going to make roll a little log, cut it in half, and then opening them up in the middle. I don't want to cut them entirely. I just want to open them up, put a bit of edible glue inside, and putting back the gum paste and rolling it. So that way it's really well adhered on the gum paste. And I'm gonna put them on the back of the moon. Once again, using a bit of glue and with my shaping tool, I just make sure that the edge of properly adhere to the, uh, the moon. My two skewers have to be really parallel because they have to go straight in the cake. If they go, they're crooked a bit, they're gonna damage the cake more than anything. So leaving that to dry a couple of days, it's gonna be easy. Now, making the tree, using the latest mold from Katie Sue Design. I love that mold. It's a fun mold to make a beautiful tree. A bit of cornstarch. And I'm going to be applying some fondant. I'm not, you, you could use gum paste. For this one, I use some fondant. My fondant has a bit of tylose inside, so it becomes a bit like if it was gum paste. So making sure my piece I found that this really goes in most of the cavity, well, all, all the cavities. Now using my little piece of plexiglass, I'm going to shave the excess bit by bit, not too much at a time, because I don't want it to just rip it off. And it will rip off some of the ends. So some places, as you will see, don't have any fondant inside. That's okay, because I'm going to be rolling it back inside. So I picked up the rest. Now with my shaping tool, I'm just making sure that they all are inside properly. And now with rolling a bit of gum fondant in my hand, I'm going to go and fill in all the rest of the cavity. So they do adhere one to the other properly by putting the pressure. And I'm going to go all around the mold, filling all the cavity and removing the excess. It's so much fun to do and so much beautiful detail on this one. Okay, let's go a bit fast forward. So you see I'm filling all, all the cavities. Sometimes it's better that way. Okay, so now Shaving again, any excess that I have. Those pieces of plexiglass uh, are so useful for that. Because it makes it, I apply it flat on the mold and it just follows and creates a piece that's all even in the back. So even if I adhere, adhere it to a cake, I know that it's not bumpy. I know it's really flat. Okay, so now to remove 
Before I remove it, I'm going to apply some bit of pressure on it just to make sure that I have a good imprint of all the detail that's in it. Cleaning my workstation. Okay, to, so to remove it, before I, I just try to remove it, I'm going to free pieces by pieces, branch by branch, just by folding it, stretching it slightly, folding it, so that a bit of hair goes between the fondant and the mold, so it, every piece is detached themselves slowly. I know when they go back in, they still adhere, but at least they're not as sticky as when I had put the pressure inside. Just making see it's starting to detach itself, making sure that all around is freed. Okay, putting it flat using a soft brittle tooth and paintbrush. I'm gonna go and free all the rest. See how come easy it comes out. Okay, so I have a one small branch that didn't went on properly, it's okay. I have still a lot of them. And now I just broke a little piece of it by pulling on it. I wasn't careful enough. But that could be fixed. So using a, a little toothpick and my shaping tool, I'm just gonna go and squash it back together again and shaping it. Uh, with this one, I like what I like to do is I like to give it a bit of a Thickness. So I'm going to lift some branches, put a toothpick in the back, and just make it to a 3D. Lift it up, put this in face, this toothpick, and bring it back. And then I'm going to leave it like that way to dry. This part was, they were stuck together during in the mold. I'm just gonna separate that branch. From one piece to another, I just choose any random branches. So that way it gives the, from one tree to another, a different shape. And that's it, leave it to dry. I'll show you a piece that I did before. See how nice it comes. And look, there's a certain thickness, so there's a certain volume lifting the branch like that. And then I'm gonna put a piece of toothpick in the back. Okay, now let's color the pumpkin. Because I wanna give them a bit of shadow. I wanna color the stem. They're not just orange like that. Using a bit of edible food color and vodka. I'm gonna make myself a little paint. Now with my paintbrush, I'm gonna mix the vodka and the food color together so that I don't have any lump inside that it's well mixed. And I'm gonna start with the pumpkin, painting this thing. If I find that it's too light, what I could do, I could just use straight full color on this tin, which I think I'm going to be doing afterwards. And then brushing all the little cavities randomly. I don't have to be perfect. You'll see afterwards, I just use my finger and remove the excess of it. So it gives it a nice little shadow, uneven. uneven. Let's do another one. So, stem. All around, yeah, that's a good thing. Okay, and then painting the cavities. See, I has a brush to wipe it with my finger, it just gives it a shadow effect, a thickness effect. And it gives it the color of the pumpkin a dirty look, like if it was really in the field. 
Now, I'm going to need some leaf to do that because it's a pumpkin field. So, once again, using Katie Sue Design leaf mold, I'm going to make some leaf. So easy to do. You see? Now, I take myself a little piece of gum paste that I colored the color I wanted, the, the dark green. I roll it into a small point to begin with, and then I just apply it in. And separate it. Push all the excess inside and it's done. There's so many size of leaf on this one so I choose only four size because according to the size of the pumpkin but all, all depending on the project that you have you could choose whichever size that you want. In, make sure that there's no excess going out. So I do a little point so that way I know my top of the leaf is perfect and then filling the rest, remove the excess, pushing it in properly so that get all the imprint properly. But the cornstarch so doesn't stick to my finger too much. Okay, so when I remove them, I give them a shape. I just curve them randomly to give them a little shape. And I do actually stack them one next to the other, one on top of the other to let them dry that way. Because I don't want them to go back flat and just want them to keep that shape. So let's do a few more. I'll show you. Fast forward. So you see now my stack of leaf, they're one on top of the other. They won't stick together. If they do stick together, they'll separate very easily because they were already aired, dried a bit. Fold in, and that's it. Now let's do a bunch of them. Now, all my leaf are ready. <laughs> As you see, I did quite a few of them. Now it's time to color them with some petal dust. So I made, mix myself a batch of petal dust to the shade that I wanted using different shade of petal dust. And I'm gonna be coloring each leaf one by one on both sides, giving them a nice green effect with the thickness of the other green, makes it that it has a natural, more natural effect. So I'll be doing all those leaves like that. One by one. So you don't need to see it all done. Let's go fast forward a bit. I wish I was doing working that fast. Okay, now it's to assemble the cake. Uh, I cover my cake the same color as the pumpkin with fondant and I put it on a black baseboard, which is perfect for Halloween. Now I pre-measured where my skewers have to go inside the cake for the moon. So I'm making a pre-hole. Now I'm doing that because that's a dummy cake. It's not a real cake. If it was a real cake, I could just push it in. But since it's a dummy, it has a bit stiffer. So I pre-made the hole. I'm pushing it inside. Let's add on some trees. As you can see, it's a dummy cake. It's harder to come out. Let's put it in and put another tree on the other side. I'm going to put it on the edge so it's right straight in the fondant. I don't need to make a pre hole on this one. You see how beautiful the tree comes out? And if I would have wanted, I could have made some small, small leaf and put them on the tree. Now 
Okay, now I'm gonna be gluing the pumpkin. Why am I gluing them? Because I don't want them to move around. I want them to be stable when I move the cake. So I'm gonna glue them one by one, putting them randomly. It's a pumpkin patch, so it needs a lot of pumpkin. Okay, now I'm at the leaf effect. I'm almost done. I'm gonna put in all the leaf, one by one, randomly. Gives them them the effect that I desired. Some of them are curved differently. So I could lay them flat, sideways on the pumpkin, go around, and I'm gonna be covering the cake. On the leaf, I might glue a few of them on the outskirt so that they don't fall during transportation. It's not very important because they're very easy to put back on. So I hope you enjoyed it. We're coming to the end of it. And there is the finished cake. It was a fun one to do. Hope you enjoyed it again.